Hello everybody, Mr. A here again. Uh, welcome to another edition of Algebra 2. Uh, today we're in uh, Chapter 2, Section 8. Good news, this section is not going to be very long, not going to be real difficult. I know it's been a little, a little tough the last couple of sections here, but uh, this one's going to be uh, a lot easier, so uh, uh, you can relax uh, and uh, just enjoy this one today. All right, so let's get started. Our objectives today... Uh, we want to be able to graph linear inequalities and number two graph absolute value inequalities so just different types of inequalities that we're going to graph here today all right so first of all linear inequalities what is a linear inequality uh, basically it just uh, it resembles a linear equation pretty much the same thing except for instead of an equal sign it has an inequality symbol for example greater than less than greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, those signs. All right, basically here are the steps for graphing the uh, linear inequalities. Number one, we're going to graph the boundary, and, and that's going to be, at least in this case, the linear uh, inequalities. It's the, uh, it's the line. Okay, so th we're going to graph the part where it's equal to. That's the boundary. Um, and so we're going to graph that first. Number two, then we figure out if the line is solid or dotted. And then number three, uh, what side of the line we're going to shade. That's basically what we're going to do today. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, here's an example. X minus 2Y is less than 4. Okay, well, first of all, what um, form of the equation would we like to put that in in order to graph it? Okay, so Y equals MX plus B. Hmm, one of the most popular forms, uh, form, whatever, you know, you get it, formulas in, uh, in algebra. Okay, um, oops, hold on, it's running away on me here. Um, all right, so what are we going to do? We want to get y by itself here. So I'm going to first subtract x. That Now notice that negative in front of the 2y is still there, so... We have a negative 2y is less than negative x plus 4. I would suggest um, put it in the order of y equals mx plus b. If you write 4 minus x, you might get confused as to what's what there. So make sure you write uh, negative x plus 4. Uh, last step here, we're going to divide by a negative 2. And hopefully right about now, some alarm bells are going off in your mind saying, whoa, divide by a negative. What does that mean? we have to flip the inequality sign around. So what we have is y is greater than, uh, what do we do here? Negative x over negative 2. Well, remember, if there's not a number there, it counts as a negative 1. So negative 1 over negative 2, the negatives cancel, and just leaves you with a positive 1 half x. 4 divided by negative 2 is minus 2. So we have that now in the y equals mx plus b form. Um, and so where do we begin? We begin with B, which is the y-intercept, and of course, that's this right here. That's the negative 2. So I'm going to go to my graph here, down to negative 2, and put a dot. That's the y-intercept, okay? Then this, the 1 half, is the m, or this slope. So that tells me how to move, okay? So from here, from the, the uh, dot where I started, I'm going to move up one and two to the right and do another dot, up one and two to the right, another dot. Or I can also go down one and two to the left. Okay, I can do that as well, both directions. So that's the line, okay, or the boundary. Now, I have the second step is I have to figure out if that's a solid or dotted line. Now, we've actually talked about this before at least in Algebra 1. Um, how do we know if it's a solid or a dotted line? Look at the, uh, the uh, sign here. If there is an equal sign, then it's solid. If there is no equal sign, then it's dotted. So in this case, um, we are missing the equal sign, so that means we are going to be missing part of our line. So let's just go ahead and try to make this a dotted line as best I can here. So there's our dotted line. And then the third step is I have to figure out what side to shade. Well, if we do it with this method by getting y by itself, and you've done this all correctly, then here you have y is greater than 
1 half x minus 2. Well, that 1 half x minus 2, that's the line. So if we're saying y is greater than that, okay, think about on this graph, here's y. Okay, what numbers are greater than that line? Okay, if this is a negative 2 right here on y, what numbers are greater than negative 2 on y? Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, all the numbers above it. So what we're going to do then is we're going to shade that side. And that's all we have to do. So, again, let me just reiterate. Steps number one, get it into y equals mx plus b form. Uh, you graph the line. Then determine if it's solid or dotted. If there's an equal sign, you have a solid line. If there's no equal sign, it's dotted. And then if y is greater than, you shade above. If y is less than, you'd shade below. Okay? Let's look at another one. Hmm, okay, a little bit a little bit tougher here, but let's try to go through the same steps, okay? Let's try to get y by itself. Okay, first step is minus 3x. So that leaves me with 1 half y greater than negative 3x plus 4. Well, now I've got 1 half y. How do I get rid of the 1 half? Hmm. Well, a lot of times people think, well, if it was a 2, I would just divide by 2, so I could divide by 1 half, but that gets a little tricky, right, with the fraction. So remember, one of my favorite things, multiply by the reciprocal, okay? So just multiply this by 2 over 1. And why I do that is because then this 2 on top and the 2 on the bottom will cancel each other out and leave me with y all by itself. And I just have to make sure when I multiply by 2, I multiply everything on this side by 2. So put that in parentheses and multiply by that, that by 2, which means we're going to then distribute this, okay? So um, does the sign switch around? Nope, because I multiplied by a positive number. So it did not change, so still greater than. Uh, this is going to, going to be a negative 6x plus 8. Ooh, hopefully this will fit on my graph here. Okay, so that's our, um, that's our equation. Let's see what we can do here now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, well, kind of barely makes it here. Uh, eight's going to be right up about here, just off the graph. But on the y uh, axis, there's, um, there's eight. And then our slope is negative six or negative six over one. So that means from here, I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one down one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one. And that's probably about all I can get on there at the, at, at the moment. All right, so is it solid or dotted? Look at the sign here. It's missing the equal sign. So this is going to be a dotted line. So I'm going to try to make this dotted as best I can here. It's going to be a little challenging. Hmm. More or less, OK. Um, and now this is a lot steeper line, but again, think about if y is greater than this, this line is negative 6x plus 8. So what numbers are greater than this line? Or in, in this case, it's kind of up high here, but you got 8 on the y-axis. Well, what numbers are greater than that? 9, 10, all above this, you know, same thing if you looked at this number right here. Um, which would be 1, 2, 3, negative 4. What numbers are greater than negative 4 on y? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, all the numbers above it. And so in this case, we're going to shade to the right. Okay, so notice, I think on that last one we shaded, which way did we shade on that one? We shaded basically to the left or above. And uh, this time it was also greater than, and we shaded to the right. So don't think left and right here is when it's y is greater than or y is less than. Always think up and down. Up is um, greater than, less than goes down, okay? So it's always up and down on these. Now, that's if you, and both of those are if you have like a y. Now, there is one special little thing that kind of throws you a curveball here. What if you don't have a y? What if it's just x like this? x is greater than or equal to negative 3? Well, remember, we've talked about a lot recently, if you just had y equals a number, how it was 
a horizontal line, right? Well, this is basically exactly the opposite thing if we just have x equals a number, or in this case greater than, um, we're going to do this same thing except it's not going to be horizontal, it's going to be vertical, okay? So this is another kind of just a shortcut here, you know that anytime you have x and then a number, it's going to be a line that goes straight up and down and it's going to go on negative 3 for x, so this is going to be 1, 2, 3 for x, so it's going to go right through here and it's going to be um, a solid line this time because notice there is an equal sign under here. So we're going to make a solid line going straight up and down here. It's a little harder to draw nice straight lines on this thing. And um, and then now you go, well, what do I do now? Before, if y was greater than, it was up. Y is less than, was down. Mm, what do I do here? Well, it, just stop and think. Now it's x we're dealing with, not y. So think about it. If this is negative 3 on x, now we're thinking left and right, and go, what numbers are greater than negative 3? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All these numbers over here are greater. So we'll shade to the right. So the only time that we think left and right when we're shading these things is when it's x by itself. Anytime it's y, it's up and down. Greater than's up, less than's down, but with x, when it's only x is greater than a number or x is less than a number, then you think uh, left and right. Okay, those are the only times. Okay? All right, graphing an absolute value inequality. All right, let's see, what do we do with that? Well, if you look at this, that should look kind of familiar. Graph the boundary. Determine if the line is solid or dotted. Determine what side of the line to shade. It's pretty much the same steps as what we just did, except remember an absolute value graph is going to look a little bit different. It's going to be a V-shape. Okay, That's the only difference. All right, so let's take a look at one here. And now you may remember, you may remember from the last uh, video, um, how we could take the parent function and move it. And so if you and if you can kind of remember how that works here, you could do this graph very quickly. Um, if not, uh, you know, you, you can type it in on your calculator. Uh, we've talked a little bit about that. Um, or you could just make a table. But remember the key thing here is if you don't remember anything else, if you're going to make a little table, remember that the point of the V is always whatever makes ins this inside the absolute value uh, zero. So in this case, what would make x zero? Well, if x was zero. So I'm going to use that, and then I'm just going to pick points on both sides of that. So I've got zero, one, two, and then negative one, negative two. And so what happens if I put zero in? Absolute value zero minus four is negative four. What if I put in one? 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 1 I put in here, its absolute value is 1, and then 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And 2, negative 2 I put in here, absolute value is positive 2, minus 4 is negative 2. So these would be some key points here. Again, if you type this in your calculator, uh, you could uh, find the same uh, these same points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and I'm going to plot 0 and 1, 2, 3, negative 4. I've got negative 1, negative 3, uh, negative 2, negative 2, and then on the other side 1, negative 3, and 2, negative 2. And if you notice it makes the v-shape. And uh, if you remember from our last uh, um, from our last uh, video that if you have a number outside here, remember that moves it up or down from zero. So remember the parent function made the v uh, point and the point was at zero, zero, and this would go move it four down, and that's what it did. It moved it down one, two, three, four. Fortunately, I wasn't paying really close attention here, but fortunately, this one is equal to because I already made the solid lines here. Uh, if it was not equal to, then I would have had to make this dotted. I would have had to go change that. But here's our graph. Now, now, what do you think? It says y is greater than all this stuff here. So remember, it's y is greater than. Which direction do you think we would shade? Would we shade above the line or below the line? 
Well, if y is greater, that's going to be above, just like before. So we're going to shade everything up above here. Okay, and again, technically this continues on forever here, so if you wanted to make this graph a little bit longer and really shade this in nicely here, you can do that. Really shade it in nicely. Really nicely. Okay? So that's what that's going to look like. One more. Okay. Again, if you can remember a few things about parent functions and how to move them, you could do this one very, very quickly. Uh, but again, I'll kind of talk you through the long way here, uh, just in case. If we make this table, what is going to be the point of the V? What's going to make this inside here equal 0 if x was 2, because 2 minus 2 is 0, and then we take absolute value of 0 plus 1 would be 1. So we have the point of 2, 1. And then I'm also going to just use 1, 0, and then 3, 4. Okay, so let's plug 1 in. I'm going to take 1 here, plug it in, 1 minus 2, negative uh, 1. Then I take the absolute value, which is positive 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then I put in 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. I take the absolute value. It's positive 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then down here, 3 minus 2 is 1. Absolute value is still 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And you notice we're getting some, some of the same numbers here again. 4 minus 2 is 2. Absolute value is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So when I go to plot these points then, I've got the point of 2, 1. Uh, 1, 2, 0, 3. And then uh, 1, 2, 3, 2. And 4, 3. Now, before I draw this in, this time I'm paying attention, there's no equal sign here. So I'm going to have to make this a dotted line. So we'll make it a dotted line. It's going to look something like that. And since y is less than, less than shades below. So that means you're going to shade all this stuff out here. So everything below. And, and again, remember, you know, what we talked about parent um, functions and their transformations. Remember, this plus 1 means from 0, you'd move it up 1. And that minus 2 inside, that means it's opposite, so that would move it 2 to the right. So that point of the V moved up 1 and 2 places over to make our V there. So that'd be kind of the quicker way to do it instead of doing the table like this. Anyway, that's it. Um, that's the whole section. Graphing inequalities. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the fact that it was a little easier uh, today and a little bit shorter. And uh, I'll see you next time in class. Bye.